So what is going on guys, NandoPants93 here with another video and today we're going to be talking about iPadOS 13.2 and what to expect from it. The beta released I think two or three days ago and it's not, it hasn't been released to the public as of yet. Right now we're on iPadOS 13.1.2 which brought a lot of, you know, back-end improvements that were much needed for both the iPhone and the iPad. But I kind of just wanted to run through the new features that we were expecting for iPadOS 13.2. And again, if you guys saw my iPadOS 14.0 wishlist, you'll know that all these updates coming up are gonna be incremental updates to the back end to maybe, they're gonna be mostly to improve performance as opposed to really making any front end changes that are very visual and you know out of this world. So let's hop right into it. So first off, just know that the 13.2 update is gonna be about three and a half to four gigabytes of space. So make sure you have anywhere from six to eight gigs of free space before you make this update. If not, it's gonna either take forever or it's not even gonna work and it's gonna kick you back onto 13.1.2. One thing that it is bringing back is perspective zoom. Before, especially with, uh, I think it came out in iOS 11 or 12, so you would pick any background or wallpaper. This is mostly for the iOS 13, but it does work with your certain wallpaper. But before, you used to be able to put in perspective zoom, which meant, which meant if you move your device around, the wallpaper will, would kind of move with you using the, the gyroscope inside of the device. And now it's brought back. So it's just down here, you press this button and it puts you into perspective zoom. I never use it because I, I don't want it moving around. It also uses up a little bit more battery than I would want. So I avoid that setting, but it's there if you guys want it now. So now another thing that's happening is in the settings, you're gonna get a new airplay and handoff section in your settings. <laughs> Basically what that means is it puts all the AirPlay features and options into a certain tab in your settings so you don't have to like dig super into the actual settings app to find out what you want to do. And it allows you basically to choose what choose what device you're AirPlaying to and what devices you're handing off to. So if you're using this device and you want to hand it off to your AirPod, that's also possible. Oh, and then you can finally tell Siri to read your messages through your AirPods or Beats Pro. So that was a feature that was mentioned in WWDC. So let's say you're running, you're using your iPhone, you, you, for some reason you have your iPad and you're running with it, you got your AirPods on, you don't wanna pull it out, pull out your, your messages app. So you just say, you know, hey blank, read me these messages and then you can answer that way. I'm not a big fan of using the assistant period, Siri period. The voice dictation has gotten a lot better for Siri. So if you do wanna use voice dictation while you're sending a message, then I would trust it more so than not but I'm still, again, not a fan. So most of these updates are things that I'm, I'm going to avoid. Now they've changed up where they're putting the home screen and dock setting tab. So right now it's in the display and brightness tab. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you get basically how you wanna lay out your home screen, but now it's gonna be in the settings. So that's what, what's to expect from there. And I kind of like that because it eases it up and it kind of gets rid of everything that's in here and keeps the display and brightness on one side and then the home screen and the dock on the other side. And then lastly, comment below if you've had this issue. I've had it a lot, especially on my new iPhone, is RAM management. So before my iPhone 10, and even on the same iPad with even the beta versions of 13.0, this would work fine. So I would open, you know, YouTube, start a video, then somebody would, you know, message me. I would get out of that, go to the messages app, and start to do a couple more things. And four apps later, I would go back to YouTube, and it would still be running on the same video, just paused. But now, for some reason, every single time. I get out of that YouTube video, and I don't know if it's just YouTube, but this is where I've noticed it the most. Every time I hop out of that video, go do something else and come back to it, the whole app just refreshes, and then I gotta go back to my history to go finish that video. So better RAM management has been promised in 13.2, and I have been noticing some better RAM management in 13.1.2, so let's hope that with 13.2 it just gets better and better. But that's pretty much it. Again, they're all back-end changes, nothing visual, nothing game-changing, just things to make your experience a little bit that much better. And that's gonna do for this video. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the support. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It's been awesome to kind of share this iPad experience with you. And I'll be releasing a couple more iPad accessory videos and reviews here soon. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. Also, I'm excited to see what Apple comes out with late October. Until next time, peace.